Well, here at the University of Reading, what we've created is a robot with a biological brain. This is a brain where the neurons are cultured, are grown under laboratory conditions, so that the only control of a physical robot is this biological brain that we have grown. We take um, neurons, a suspension of neurons, and place it onto a multi-electrode array, which is essentially a dish uh, that has a surface of 60 or so electrodes that can pick up the electrical signals displayed by the neurons. Um, they then grow, divide, connect up, start to display various complex electrical activities which we can then introduce into the closed loop system that comprises these biological cells, these neurons, on the multi-electrode array connected up to the robotic system and then the sensory information from the robotic system is fed back into the neurons, thereby giving us this hybrid animat as their term. Now this is really exciting because we can put the robot into different situations and see how the memories that the robot have actually appear in the brain. We can see the neurons firing and making connections between each other. When we understand what's happening in the brain, this has tremendous potential within the medical world, particularly things like Alzheimer's disease. We can actually see what's going on in a brain, a biological brain, with memories. How are memories stored? How are they recollected? And what happens in the future? Can we strengthen the memories so that they don't disappear? Once the brain cells, once the neurons on the MEA are introduced to the closed loop system, the electrical activity of the neurons is picked up via the MEA. That electrical activity goes through fairly complex processing steps which ultimately drive the robot's speed of movement, the speed of its wheels, the direction in which it turns. Now the robot itself is equipped with sensory apparatus, sonar sensors which we could say are equivalent to our ears and so forth. That sensory information which the robot is picking up all the time, how far am I away from a given wall or the wall behind me, we can then turn into electrical stimulation that's delivered back to the neurons on the MEA. And so in that way, information coming out and information being fed back in and the interaction between the two goes around and around to form this closed loop. And it's by this means that we hope that the robot will actually learn to perform meaningful functions. We're really getting to the exciting stage of the project where we can try and teach the robot how to behave. But already what's amazing is with the robot going through particular procedures, coming to the wall, avoiding an object, and doing that repetitively, it's actually learning in that way. The neuron links are strengthening just from the habit that the robot has of doing something repetitively. I mean, you can see this in humans. You do something frequently, you get used to doing it, you become better at it. That's what's exactly happening within the robot. We don't even have to tell it. It's improving as it keeps doing something. One of the fundamental questions that neuroscientists are facing today is how we link the activity of individual neurons to the complex behaviours that we see in whole organisms, whole animals. And so this project gives us a really unique opportunity to look at something that may exhibit whole behaviours but still remain closely tied to the activity of individual neurons. And hopefully we can use that to go some way to answer some of these very fundamental questions. We have an ageing society, particularly in the Western world, and so problems such as Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, even strokes, are going to be much more prevalent and much more of a problem for people. What we're doing here with this research is trying to understand some of the basic characteristics within a brain, so hopefully some of those diseases, at least we can find ways of, of remedying them, but maybe even discover a cure.